Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian, and today I'm going to be taking you through Flower's Delete Rows from Excel action. So as with any of the Flower actions, you can start to delete rows to your structured data formats, so your data that sits in Excel tables, but also you can start to delete rows from your unstructured data formats too. So let's go ahead and take a look at the solution. So this is the Excel file I'm using in the solution today. So this is an accounts Excel file and it holds all of the accounts for a company for different softwares. So in the solution today, I've created a flow to be able to delete rows in this Excel table when a software is no longer being used by the company. So in this example, we're going to be removing any rows where the system is equal to invoice system because the invoice system is no longer being used. So let's take a look at the flow to do this. So this is my flow. So my flow is manually triggered and it's got an input of a text variable called deleted software. And this is gonna make the flow dynamic. So you can run this flow whenever a new software is no longer being used. It means you can keep rerunning it and reusing it. After the trigger, we've got two initialized variable actions. So the first one is initializing a string variable called row array. And this will contain the rows that we need to delete in the Excel file. And the second one is called loop count. And this is going to keep account of what row number we're on further down the line when we're in and apply to each loop. And the loop count variable needs to start at number two because in the Excel file, the data starts on row number two because row number one is a header row. So we don't want to include the header row in our row count. We want to start where the data starts. Next, I'm getting my file content. So I'm using OneDrive as my data source today. So I'm just going to use the get file content action here. Then I can get rows from Excel and this is using another one of Flower's Excel actions. So I've already created a video and a blog post for this action. So I'm not going to go into details of it today or of how to use it. We just need to know for this example that that's how we're getting the data from our Excel file. So once we've gotten the rows from Excel using the outputs of the get file content, we then need to pass JSON the outputs of that first flower action. And this is just to make it easier to deal with that row data. And it's going to create dynamic variables that we can use further down the line. Then we go into and apply to each loop. So we're going to be looping over the body output of the pass JSON. So just make sure that you've got body in here. And because we've done the pass JSON, it means we can get dynamic values out of our row data. So we can use this software variable here, which is going to relate to the software column in the Excel table is equal to, and that deleted software input variable that we initialize when we run the flow. So that means if the software is equal to the deleted software, it means we need to keep track of what the row number is so that we can then go and delete that row in the next flower action. So to do this, if this is equal to true, we're going to go down the yes branch and we're going to append to our row array string variable. Now we can't just append the loop count variable here because it needs to be in this special format here. So the format it needs to be to delete the row is open square bracket the loop count or the row number, dash, the row number, and a closing square bracket. And it's quite small, but underneath that, I've added a comma as well. Even though that we're appending to a string variable, it essentially still needs to be in array format. So we just need to make sure that we are breaking up each item with a comma. So the reason it needs to be like this is it's just the way that the input needs to be for the delete rows from Excel action. And it's because when the action is reading this information, when it's looking in these square brackets, it's looking at the first row to delete data from to the last row to delete data from. So say you want to delete to delete rows two, three, four, five. Here you would have open bracket two dash five close bracket. But because we're only deleting one row at a time, we're not deleting rows that lie next to each other. Our first row that we're deleting is, say, row two. And the last row that we'll be deleting 
is row two again. So that's just the format it needs to be in to make the action work. The last step in our loop is to then increment our loop count variable so that we can move on to the next row in the Excel when we go through the loop. And this needs to happen even if the row that we're currently on isn't being deleted because we still need to increment the loop count so we can move on to the next row. Once we've built up our row array string variable, we can then use the delete rows from Excel flower action. So this is what the action looks like. The file content is going to be the output from the get file content OneDrive action. And we can see the row array here we've added in our string array. However, if I just scroll back up, when we are appending to our string array, after we've done the close bracket, we're adding a comma each time, which means the last item in that string is going to have a comma. But we need to remove this comma or we're going to get an error when we run the flow. So we can do this using the following expression here. We can use substring to just remove that last item from the string. So this is how you use the action if you're deleting multiple sets of rows. However, if you're just, say, deleting one row, you could just populate the first row and the last row inputs here. Or if you were only deleting, say, one series of rows, so we'll go back to the old example of deleting rows two to rows five, you would put row two here and row five here. However, because we've got multiple different rows that we're deleting, we're going to be using an array. So once we've run the flower action, the last step then is to update the Excel file using the file content output from the delete rows from Excel action. So that's the flow. So before I run this, let's just take a quick look at the account Excel file again. So just to recap, this is what our file looks like. We've got two rows currently using invoice system and the data goes up until row seven. So I'm going to close that down now and I'm going to run the flow and I just need to make sure I don't get any spelling mistakes. Invoice system and run the flow. Okay, so the flow has run. So let's go back to OneDrive and have a look at the results. I'm just going to give this a refresh. We can see the accounts file has been edited a few seconds ago. And we can see that there are no softwares for invoice system. And the data now currently goes to row five. So that means those two invoice system rows have successfully been deleted. So this video has shown you how you can start to delete rows from your Excel files using Encodian's Flower. In this solution, we looked at deleting rows from unstructured data file, but you can also start to delete rows from your structured data files too, where your data lies in an Excel table. We also had a look at how you can delete individual rows at a time, but as mentioned in the video, you can delete multiple rows at the same time as long as the rows lie next to each other. So for example, deleting, say, rows 5 to 10. We also use Encodian Flower's Get Rows from Excel action in this solution. I didn't go into detail about this action in the video today. However, the link to the blog post and the video that's already been created for this action have been posted in the description below. So if you're interested or if you want to know how this works to incorporate it into your solution, please have a look and check out the links. If you have any questions about anything you've seen today, please leave me a comment down below or get in touch with us at Encodian. And as always, happy automating.